Very simple question. Based on the Labour MP who branded Brexiteers racist yesterday in an escalation of the row over whether Rule Britannia should be sung on the BBC. In a late night social media rant, Neil Coyle said he had never known anyone but... I can't say the word, to like the song as he posted a video of Nigel Farage singing it, following another tweet by Jacob Rees-Mogg, which said Britons must never be enslaved by political correctness. Coyle posted the following. I have spent years warning local people that these fat old racists won't be blaming the EU when their hits the fan. Here they come blaming others. Absolute bag racist There it is. It's a nice fella. Uh, Let's speak to Esther Cracker, who's political commentator, Femi Olawele, who's a political activist. Femi, you were very prominent, of course, during the EU referendum. I think I've probably spoke to you about 197 times during the run up to all of that. Um, What do you make of one of your fellow Remainers using this kind of language? Afternoon to you. Afternoon. Um, well, if he's if he's saying that in relation to um, the 17.4 million people who voted for Brexit, that is entirely wrong, um, because uh, I've spent the last three, well, spent the past two years going around the country speaking to Brexit voters specifically, and they are not um, all racist. Most of them are deeply abhorred by um, deeply abhor the uh, uh, racism that was led by that was brought out by the people leading the campaigns. Uh, however, if he is talking about the people leading the campaigns, then that's, uh, I think it's legitimate to call them, call them out for racism. I mean, what he says here is, I spent years warning local people that these fat old racists won't, uh, won't stop blaming the EU when their stuff hits the fan. Hmm. Now, that's, that's making a dis- direct distinction between the local people who may have voted Brexit and the people who, who, are, blaming, who are blaming the EU. So who are the, who are the fat old racists then? I think he might be talking about people such as those leading leading the UKIP, leading uh, those those in U, those who are the politicians or, or the uh, or the media journalists. Because let's not let's not forget, N- Nigel Farage stood in front of a poster of uh, asylum seekers coming from the Middle East, which had nothing to do with Brexit. He pointed to them as the problem, even though there was no even though our leaving the EU had nothing to do with. Our, our obligations towards asylum seekers. So this this is true. This is true, and it was a bad judgment of a of an ad. But of course, he wasn't the official campaign for me. He wasn't the official campaign, but there, to, to suggest that nobody followed Nigel Farage when it's the referendum wouldn't have come about if it wasn't for Nigel Farage is slightly incorrect. So but you think people were that, seduced by racism? I think there were definitely some who were, because I've been I've been out around the country and I've definitely spoken to people. Who, who are why are you doing that, by the way? Why, why are you going around the country? Are you trying to work out a, a, a are you try to revise something that will make oh, the loss uh, feel better? Oh, I'm definitely not doing it right now, especially with COVID. I mean, I'm talking about the last couple of years. Yeah, sure. As in, as in during the campaign. But the, the point is, what I'm saying is most people who voted for Brexit hate racism. But the people who led it, there was definitely a racial charge. But you could no you, reason to point. For but that. you could Post. say that the the people that mostly led it would have been Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, mm-hmm. and you would have had uh, Gisela Stewart and people like that. So across party men and women, I didn't see any racism coming from Gisela or Mr. Gove. Well, that you could, you could argue the fact that uh, maybe not racism specifically, but definitely xenophobic intolerance. Um, they, they were promoting the narrative that EU immigration was a burden. They, made, they, they stoked up fears. The official leave campaign stoked up fears about Turkey joining, even though they, that had no chance of happening. They meet, they meet about one out of 31 criteria for joining the EU. So but that's not one, a realistic but that, that isn't necessary. I mean, that's talking about EU expansion, isn't it? That's, that's highlighting the uh, eventual end desires of an EU. Uh, that's to be bigger. Uh, uh, to, be, to be bigger, yes, but the, the to point to, to Turkey specifically and not other countries, other, other white majority countries in Europe that that they, they chose specifically a country full of people um, with um, who, who are visually more um, Middle Eastern rather than people um, in, in other accession countries. But we were mostly. To, I mean, when we're talking about, I mean, the idea that it's about color is is preposterous, for me, isn't it? Because you know we know that most people in Europe are white. Yeah. 
That's the point. So when Nigel Farage stood in front of a poster full of people who were not white to scare people about to scare people about European migration, he chose a visual that was that had a race that did, what had nothing to do yeah, with it, Brexit. It, indeed, but because he, it he wasn't the people. campaign. But he wasn't the main campaign, was he? And that was on the news for about three hours one day. I mean, at the time. So you're suggesting that if people were seduced by it, then they kind of somehow identified with a racial narrative. If, the, if that was your reason for voting for Brexit, then yes, you identified with a racial narrative because it made zero sense because the people in that photograph were not European citizens and therefore had no right to freedom No, but in movement. fairness, I don't think that's the point that he was making. What about the author Will Self, who described all racists voted leave? Is it, you, you'd concur with that then, if, you, if that's the way round you wanted to look at it? So um, you may hear some Remainers make the point of uh, not all Libras are racist, but all racists voted leave. I think that's an unhealthy uh, narrative to go down because you can apply it to anything. You could say um, not all white people are white supremacists, but all white supremacists are white. It's just as unhelpful as that. So nobody would say that because that's deeply harmful, deeply divisive. That's a completely disgusting thing to say. Um, and so in the same vein, to make the point that you can tar all lead voters with the actions of, of the minority of racists, that's completely unfair. OK, let me bring in Esther, Esther Crackle, political commentator. Well, what do you make, firstly, Esther, of, of Neil Coyle's comments uh, that, well, essentially Brexit voters are big fat racists? Yeah, I do think there's still a sect of people that can't accept that Brexit happened for reasons other than the fact that they believe that people that voted for Brexit are racist, which doesn't even make sense because most people in EU member states are white. Um, you know, I, I am glad that Femi highlighted the fact that this is not, you know, all sort of uh, remain voters that think this way, but there is still a sect in in um, our political discourse, a group of people like that, that think that a lot of people that voted Brexit are racist. And what worries me is the fact that a lot of these people actually tend to be part of the political ruling class. There are a lot of members of like the left and the far left of this country that still believe that whoever voted um, Brexit was just because they were racist you know, fat white man who's uneducated. And I think it's it's not only unhelpful, but it's also incredibly disrespectful. That's a huge claim to make on 17.4 billion people. Um, so yeah, it's just it just goes to show that there is a sect of our political class that does see a, a huge swath of this country as fundamentally being a bit stupid, really. Do you think that's, Femi, is, is it that? I mean, you're a, you know, you're a posh middle-class lad yourself. Are you sneering at the working classes? This is pretty much the narrative that's being driven by those on the Brexit side, the politicians themselves, the idea that all, all Remainers think that all Leavers are racist and stupid. It is the narrative used to basically stir up anger and keep the division. But it's flowing. there, isn't it? You're, I've, I've you're spent, talking about I, no, 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 the subtleties no, no, no. I, I, of the, I, I, of the I've, Brexit I've just, campaign. I've just, I've just spent the last fi um, five minutes explaining how the majority of Leave voters um, uh, ab abhor racism and, and, and how this is not the narrative that's being driven. And, and it's, but and you're it's largely... still squeezing out the same point, really, aren't you? You're, you're doing sort of what you're accusing Farage of doing, and that's the so sort of dog whistle stuff where it's not always overt. You could say a poster was, but lots of other symbolisms and speeches. It's just subtle. It's an underpinning. It kind of weaves its way around and gets itself out there. Are you not doing the same thing, really? You say, well, I'm not saying they're all racist and stupid and dumb and fat and white, but underneath it all, when you tear it apart, that's kind of what your message is, isn't it? You're portraying the exact thing I just criticised. I've just no, spent I appreciate five minutes, you are criticising it. I've just, I've, 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 it's I've a just sort of a passive-aggressive thing I've there, just, isn't it? I've it? just spent the last five minutes saying that the majority of them hate racism, and yet you're suggesting that I'm saying that the majority of them have an underlying undercurrent of racism when I've just said the exact opposite. That's my point. It's being, this narrative of Remainers think Libras are all racist is being driven by people on the Brexit side. You think? Esther. Well, that's not, the point. that's not the point I made. I said, I said, and this is why I said, I'm glad Femi pointed out that not actually all Remain voters think that way. I said, there is a huge swath of our political class, as in the people who are in Westminster, the people that are making decisions that are influencing this country, the people that spent three years actually trying to stop Brexit from really happening. I do think that the huge majority of people that voted to leave the European Union are white, uneducated, you know, racist people. I'm not saying that all Remain voters think that way. I'm saying there's a huge swath of our political class. And you can see that. You can see like the takeover of the Labour Party by, you know, hard leftists and the momentum group and all of that. These are people that think that. They're not just average everyday citizens. These are supposedly educated people that are, you have an influence in our politics um, that are the elite political class and that you can't deny it. i mean this is a no, labor just, just, just one thing one thing you can deny is that when you say that the takeover by hard leftists and momentum 
That was the Brexit voting wing of the Labour Party. The hard leftists were the ones who were you spent who really? I spent the last three like years Ashton fighting Ashton against to leave the European Union. You think yeah. the likes of Ash Parker and Owen Jones, the middle class, you know, M25 elites that apparently went to you know university and did, racked up six degrees. These are the people that voted to leave the European Union, even though they spent the last three years trying to keep us in. I'm are sorry, no, 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 no. Let, let's be let's really clear. Up until September of last year. Um, Labour's Labour's policy was um, we will leave the EU under under all circumstances. It was it was people like myself who pushed the hard left of Labour to uh, to a position of a second referendum. The hard left of, La of Labour Party. I spent the last three years pushing against them because they were pro Brexit. So um, other points I aside, let's be clear on that. Labour's massive defeat in the last general election shows that they actually didn't want Brexit to happen. I mean their policy, their their their. Um, ref, uh, their um, a talk of a second referendum was basically telling all Brexit voters that you actually got it wrong. Let's let's give you another chance. That was the, that was the narrative that was going through. Even okay. someone like Theresa May, who was in the Conservative Party, wasn't really serious about leaving the European Union. So we were not just talking about a small fringe of hard leftists. We're talking about a huge part of our political class that weren't actually really interested in seeing us leave the European Union. Um, let, let's let's be really clear. As I, as I said, the, the hard left Labour Party was pro Brexit. If we're going to talk about what, how popular the, the concept of a second referendum was versus Boris Johnson's Brexit, what if you if you were to, to decide between leaving the EU with Boris Johnson's deal and having a second referendum? Based on the results of the 2019 general election, what do you think the majority wanted? Based on those results, not a second referendum. Have you been paying attention? Um, <laughs> sorry, my, my, friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. Um, the 54 percent. No, hang on. 52.7 percent of voters in the 2019 general election voted for parties whose manifesto is committed solidly to a second referendum. So in, so in terms of the difference between- And a simple yes or no, leave or yeah, remain. Yeah. That's the only conversation that's worth having. It's not and about checking. They, they could have voted for other things in the manifestos of these parties. You do realize that, but the manifestos of these parties weren't just based on one thing. So um, that, you're, you're, you're on, Brexit, we're on Brexit, the question was remain or leave, most people voted to leave. It's really that simple. You know, this so, is the, the about plan that people like to do, saying, "Oh, but the manifestos of all these parties, there was there was a section okay. that was about staying in the EU. Therefore, most people actually wanted to stay in the EU when most people voted to leave." That's not an argument that washes. We voted to leave the European Union. Fi Femi, is, Femi, Femi, final response to that it doesn't mean anything. You're crunching numbers. You're making funny sums up here. Boris Johnson won on a manifesto to get Brexit done. We spent the last four, three years negotiating a Brexit deal, and uh, and the people who were on the Brexit side disagreed with each other so much so that two out of the three main pro-Brexit parties opposed Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. The DUP, who spent the last three years propping them up, the Brexit party opposed the Brexit deal and said people would rather remain than leave on those terms. And even now. Boris Johnson is opposing his own Brexit deal, calling it unfair, saying that the political declaration means that we're tied to the sort of deal that people don't actually want. So to suggest that this is the will of the people, when okay. the only opportunity to decide between different versions of Brexit, most people chose parties that were put into right. a second uh, referendum. Which, which, uh, and of course, where, where do we stop with referendum? We could keep going. Listen, Femi, thank you. Femi Olawale, political activist, Esther Krakow, who's the political commentator with us here on Talk Radio.